right guys so i would recommend always doing it on paper this is just how i think um a notebook and a pen that's all i need to start ideating i tried using an ipad before whenever i start wireframing on an ipad my brain just stops working it feels like whenever i put things down it's final even though it's not so paper just feels more organic and natural to me so that's what i would suggest so what I first started doing is I pretty much wrote down all the different categories and screens that I'm going to have. The login screen, the home and search screen, your favorites and history. Um, we want the whole coupon and stamp card feature, a randomizer, the profile, and um, of course settings and notifications. And I just started drawing things out. I see these things in my head. so. I don't really know how, I, how else to explain it to you, but I just literally start drawing and start piecing the pieces together. An app is generally made of categories at the bottom, you know, emulating existing apps is kind of what I'm doing right here. And as I'm drawing, I'm thinking about, okay, if I go from login, what is the next screen? Once I open the next screen, it's gonna be the home page, right? What's gonna be in the home page? So the home page, we're gonna have four categories, the search, the randomizer the profile and then the settings so these are you know can be changed later on but this is just what i wrote and i just started sketching ideas so i know for my search functionality i want to search by cuisine i want to search by dietary restrictions and i noticed as i got to this part i was like hmm what are ways I want to search? What are filters that I want? And so what I actually did is I stopped at this point and then I opened up a brand new page and I just started drawing a little mind map from the menu search. Like what do people look for? People look for, you know, which menus are of walking distance, which type of cuisines they might be interested in. How do people search for different menus that they want? Of course, cuisine is a really popular one. Another really popular method is, you know, people crave things. They feel like a certain mood, whether that is, you know, fried foods, they want bubble tea, they want something spicy, they want something soupy. Maybe in terms of mood, they feel like something greasy, you know, or they want hangover food, something light something romantic maybe. And then dietary restrictions is also oops, is also super important because people have a lot of dietary restrictions nowadays or even searching by people. So, you know, a menu that's for kids, a menu that's good for large groups, a menu that's suitable for seniors. Um, maybe they're hosting certain events. So occasions such as birthdays, um, a menu or restaurant that's good for a big party of a lot of people or like a company event. So these are all things that can help people narrow down their search. So after I kind of went in and brainstormed all of that, I had a better idea of, okay, so I want um, the homepage to already be that search menu. This bar that I created is supposed to have all the different categories of filters that I want. And the idea is that you can kind of push it in and also pull it out and it's always um, maintained in this area. So when you click on these different categories, this will just move up and down to the category you're looking for. And right here will be images, like nice images to show you what each of those cuisines are. Of course, a search bar is also really important. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking about what's the first thing people wanna do? Typically, we either search by categories or you already know where you wanna eat and you wanna find that specific name. Or you're in a specific location and you wanna see what's around you. So once you click on that, you'll see the map open up. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I, I just keep on changing this um, layout and as I keep thinking about things, for example, um, I think maybe showing what's nearby is the best and what's five minutes away is the best. So I want to organize the filter by location first maybe. Um, so once you click on the search button, you get this map that opens up. 
you can drag into different areas and then redo search in this area, which I think is very useful and helpful and most people use these functionalities as well. We have now entered the map section. This arrow is to go back to the previous screen, back to your home screen. So you also have to think of how people are getting in and out of these screens. So the idea is um, they can view it in this format or they can view it in the card format. They can swipe up to read the full list of all of the restaurants. I'm just thinking of different ways to view the same information. And I like this whole card mechanism because when you have cards like this, it's really easy to swipe it up and then swipe it back down without having to leave this page. So an important thing to know is people like convenience. They don't like having to click through so many screens just to get to what they want. So this interaction, which has been you know, more prevalent in apps these days is a really great invention. So I'm also thinking, you see right here, the Cozy Tavern is a restaurant. I'm gonna have little preview images to show pictures of the food because I know people love to see pictures firsthand and the ability to swipe in this interaction to see more pictures without having to leave this screen. As you can see, that's a that's a really big, important perk. After the map, I'm back onto the, the screen. As you can see, I kind of simplify the way I draw things because I don't have time to draw the icons over and over again. So the second category will be randomize. I also did think about like what order I wanna put this in. So the order is search, randomize, my profile, and then the setting. So under randomize, this is where users would go to try and find a place they want to eat. So we know that the search is used for if you know an idea of what you want, but then a lot of times people get to the point where they don't know what the hell they want anymore. So this is where the randomized feature comes in. You have a screen that tells you, oh, you can't decide. This is like an old version of it. I redrew it again in this version here. It will have the filters pre-populated. Maybe you have certain cuisines that you want to randomize, a different mood, um, and so on and so forth. I don't know how many filters I wanna add here, but I wanna keep it relatively simple. I think dietary restrictions is an important one. Once we have selected our filters, we hit randomize, we get the results back and if we want to redo it we just click randomize again if we want to go back to the previous filters we just click the back button and then it'll go back to the screen right here next we go on to the profile tab and here we'll have an image of your avatar um, you'll have your um, favorites your history and your reviews and i don't really think we need history here but um, for your favorites it of course shows all of your saved um, locations that you are interested in and then reviews will show you all the reviews you've done um, on restaurants so imagine you were on this screen for example right you click on this restaurant called cozy tavern where does that bring you to well it brings you to the restaurant page so once I click on that, it'll bring me to this right here. And I just drew a really long version of it because it's easier to show it in this way. The very top of the screen that you see first is a large image of the restaurant. You can swipe through these images to see all the different types of um, pictures that they have for their restaurant here. An icon shows you that there's plus 20 or whatever amount of images and you can click on this to show you all the images. Here gives you some basic information about the Cozy Tavern and this is where it looks different. This is where the menu starts. We're gonna have an image here that is branded. It's an image that it, the restaurant can customize themselves to really show off their restaurant. So I just drew a fake example here. Below that is the menu and right in the menu you'll see the best sellers are at the very top so you have this type of layout that shows you number one number two three four five and you can keep swiping to see all i don't know maybe top 10 of their best sellers and these will be pictures of the food with the name on them below that you'll have your dish category this is going to be like appetizers entrees drinks menu um snacks whatever and then it'll tell you how many items are within that category 
When you click on this item, it'll then open up the next menu page. Below that, we'll have photos. So this will show you all the photos that have been generated by people who are visiting this restaurant. You can click see all to see everything. And then the very last thing is the stamp cards. It lives within each restaurant page. That way you never have to hunt for a specific stamp card in your collection. You just always find it on the restaurant page. And here it might say, collect all six stamps and get one appetizer for free. And when you show up at the restaurant, you just click collect and it'll open up a QR code or some sort of scanner for them to scan and then it automatically gets um, checked off as um, you collected one stamp. To show you what it would look like after you click into appetizers, for example, it would look like this. I click on breakfast, I see the full list of the breakfast foods. It shows the images and then on the right hand side, the cost of it, maybe a little description about that food item. And then it'll also include dietary restrictions it might have like gluten-free, vegan, whatever, whatever. That's one option. Another version I did is this version using that card format again. It's a interaction that we want to, I don't know, possibly reuse over and over again. So the idea is when you click on breakfast, instead of having to go from one screen and then to another and then having to go back to the previous screen to get here, with the card format, you click on it and this card will just automatically pop up. It'll slide up, you can slide it all the way up to see everything. It's easy access for you because that way, if you wanna go back to the previous screen, you just have to slide down and you get to see the content there. Say I slid the content all the way up, it will show you all my breakfast items and then in addition, I added these two additional icons that I want beside each item. So. These icons represent images and reviews. This is supposed to be a speech bubble. <laughs> so the images will tell you that there are customer images that people have taken of this specific dish. So if you're interested, click on that to view it. And then the review is to signify that people have reviewed this specific dish. So this really solves the problem that I was dealing with before is not knowing which review was related to which Dish. Say I click on the pictures, it will then launch this screen for me. And in this screen, I'll have two toggles. I can toggle between images or reviews. This will be all the images, you know, customers have taken of this specific dish. And then if I click on reviews, I'll then see reviews that people have commented on this specific dish. This would be like the person's picture, their name, and then this is their review, and um, this is some pictures that they've added. So that's kind of how it works. And if you wanna see it in full view, you can click on the image and then you can see it in full view as well as the caption, which will have the description of the review. So yeah, that's kind of how I am picturing it to work as of right now. And then I realized after doing all that, that I didn't even create a section for reviews on this page right here. Remember this whole layout? I'm supposed to have reviews here and I realized I totally forgot it. So no worries, we're just gonna add it in. That's what this is right here. We are in the review section of that super long scrolling page of the restaurant, right? Um, this is how I, see the review page looking like. It'll tell you how many reviews there are. There's these quick filters to help you um, find certain information, a search bar so you can find um, the information that you want and a plus which will then allow you to add a review. The thing I wanna do a little differently about this screen is I want the layout to not look like this actually. I want it to look like this. So with each review, you'll have the picture of the reviewer, their name, and then all the items they've reviewed will look like this. So corned beef soup, BLT sandwich, garlic fries, maybe they took a picture of it and then their reviews. So that way here you can get a really clear like picture of what dishes they've actually done reviews on. So it's not like Yelp or anything where you just type up one big generic review. It is more specific to the dish. 
this is a alternate version that I created where instead of having everything be in a, a vertical scroll, I did it in a horizontal scroll. So each one of these cards would represent a reviewer's review. So pretend this says like Cassie, for example, and I reviewed the fries, the hot chocolate, the whatever, whatever. And then I can just swipe through them like that to see the reviews. Um, but if I wanted to add a review, this is how it would work. I'd click the plus button, I'd get a screen like this, and it'll say select dishes to review. Here are the top categories that we saw on the menu. So this could say um, appetizers, entrees, drinks, whatever. It's just so you can quickly find your the item that you want to review. Say I clicked on breakfast, I would then open up the same familiar screen and instead it will have a plus sign here. So you can add it to your review that you want to review. Say I added a, a few items from here. Next, I would see a screen like this and it'll auto-populate it. Pretend I said hot chocolate, garlic fries, and meat soup. You can click this area to write your review on each of these products and if you want to upload images there's going to be a bulk upload section where you just click upload images you know you select um maybe four images that you want to upload they populate here and then you just drag and drop the images to the correct dishes and once those are all linked together you would then hit publish and once it's published that is how your review gets on the page so that's kind of the interaction I'm thinking of using as of right now. But like I said, this could still change very, very easily since, you know, if you're working for a real company, some of these interactions might not be feasible. So it has to be tested out. But, you know, it's a good idea and this is a passion project so we can kind of go blue sky with this. But yeah, that's how I envision adding a review. All right guys, that's it for this wireframing review. As you can see, there's a lot going throughout my mind as I'm wireframing and drawing on paper and I'm kind of just all over the place because there's just so many things that are popping up in my head. But don't be worried to draw as much as you want because wireframes are in no way final and it's such a great way to start brainstorming and thinking about how everything starts to connect because there's going to be a lot of parts of it that you have not even thought of until you draw it out and you realize oh crap I like I'm missing something I hope you guys liked it I hope you guys found it to be very very helpful and if it was helpful please give this video a thumbs up also you know comment below tell me um, what was the most interesting part of this video for you and yeah subscribe to my channel because it really does help my videos get boosted so people can actually find content like mine and thank you guys for being so patient with my videos I am slowly but surely churning through all this um, app design stuff it does take some time so please be patient and it will get uploaded it's just a matter of time thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time bye